Ms. Vergara and I'm a first grade teacher and I wanted to come on here today to show everyone some examples of how our first graders are using our amazing coding app called Scratch Junior to unlock their imaginations and put it into real life in this amazing animation feature. So the great thing about this app is that it's very kid friendly where there's not lots of language barriers. You'll see that most of their coding is being used through blocks and creating a sequence of picture blocks to have their characters do some kind of movement or speech and just make it really silly, make it their own. So they use it during their may do time and they can always share it with their siblings and classmates and parents as just a fun way to express their emotions and feelings. We also use it during our learning time. So here's my example of how I modeled how to show a blizzard theme animation for our weather unit. And then students were able to use what they learned about blizzards with the wind speed and constant snow and that they can't see anything to then make a whiz or blizzard themed animation to show Ms. Vergara and all of their classmates as well. We've also been using it during our writing time to publish their writing that they've been doing um, on their own and they have been creating some holiday writings. So here's an example of one of my first graders who did a turkey themed animation um, after she completed her thankful writing. And now we have students that are creating their holiday traditions. So here's another one of their Christmas tradition around that Christmas tree with presents. So just a great way for them to extend their learning and show um, their completed work in a new fun way.
I am Vanessa Sanchez and I serve families out of the Stevenson Family Connection Center. And thanks to the community support, we are able to provide food and hygiene out of our Family Connection Center, as well as emergency uh, groceries to families that are suffering with COVID. Hi, I'm Jean Allison. I am here on site at the food pantry at Lake Hills Elementary School. And one of the special things about the food pantries that the Bellevue School District has allowed us to set up is that we not only offer food, but we offer a lot of other resources that our families need. And these resources might be uh, for rent assistance or for legal assistance, or maybe it's for family relationship help. So we offer that in addition to the food. One of the fantastic things about being a family engagement specialist with the Bellevue School District is I am getting to know families from all over the district, not just the Lake Hills families, which are fantastic, but families from all over. And they bring their kids by, and we have turned this into a very happy place. And people come, the children love coming here. Sometimes we have little toys for them. But uh, we always remember that our main job is to let people know that if they need something, they have a place to go that is safe and friendly.
Music classes have had a unique challenge as we shifted to remote learning over the last year. If you've ever sang in a choir or played in an ensemble, you can probably relate. It is much easier to learn music when you are next to or even surrounded by others you can sing or play along with. An arts and innovation grant from the Bellevue Schools Foundation allowed us to purchase licenses to music software platforms and put this innovative technology into the hands of several thousand music students this year. Smart Music and the Sight Reading Factory are two apps that support our band, orchestra, and choir students by helping them practice independently. Teachers assign music in the platform, and students can not only hear how their part is supposed to sound, but can play along while listening to other parts of the band or orchestra in their headphones so they can hear how the parts fit together. Students can even record themselves playing, and Smart Music will give them instant feedback, telling them which pitches or rhythms are played correctly, as well as highlighting anything that was missed. The Upbeat Music app is a sophisticated innovation that helps work out the latency issues that usually make it hard for groups to stay synchronized together online. This allows students to practice together in small groups, as well as allowing larger groups to do quick recordings with very little mixing or editing needed. These technologies have been absolute game changers in helping to keep students engaged and moving the learning forward during our remote teaching. As we transition back to playing music together in person, these technology platforms will continue to play an important role in keeping both our in-person students as well as our remote learners engaged in our hybrid model. Thank you Bellevue Schools Foundation for your collaboration and support. Your grants have served several thousand music students this year and allowed us to keep the music playing. You're all I ever wanted You're all I ever needed Yeah So tell me what to do now Cause I want you back Please welcome your Spring for Schools MC, Anna Liotta. Welcome. Welcome to the Spring for Schools Engaging Hearts, Enriching Minds program. Weren't those musicians amazing? It's so inspiring and incredible what's happening in our music program. Our music program serves over 4,500 students across the Bellevue Schools District. Kind of makes me wish I'd kept up the piano lessons. <laughs> We have an incredible program planned for you today and are so happy you've joined us. 
To begin our program, it's my honor to introduce the Kearns family, who will lead us in a land acknowledgement to express our gratitude and appreciation of the indigenous peoples and the land on which we stand today that they have stewarded for generations. Open Toesh, Ka'awe Awuk. Hello, my name is Irene Kearns. Open Toesh, Ka'awe Oye Uluk. Hello, my name is Xavier Kearns and I go to Chinook Middle School. Open Toesh, Ka'awe Kukukwe, which means young bear. My English name is Oscar and I am in third grade at Woodridge. We are proud members of the Federated Indians of Great and Rancheria. We are Southern Homo and Coast Miwok, and we are honored to do the land acknowledgement today. Our family, and as well as those gathered for the Novi Schools Foundation fundraiser, would like to acknowledge that we are on the indigenous land of the Coast Salish people who have reserved treaty rights for this land, including the Duwamish, Suquamish, Mohoshoot, and Snoqualmie Indian tribes. We thank these caretakers of this land who have lived and continue to live here since time immemorial. Kamalish, thank you. Thank you, Kearns family, and thank you, Coast Salish peoples. Now, we'll have some opening words from our Bellevue Schools Foundation President, Kimberly Walker. Good afternoon, friends. I am delighted to welcome you to the Bellevue Schools Foundation Spring for Schools 2021. I'm Kimberly Walker, the Board of Trustees President, and I just want to thank you for gathering with us today. We're here to celebrate your students, our shining stars, with our theme of engaging hearts, enriching minds. Today is about creating endless possibilities for each and every student. I am super excited about the amazing things that our team has planned for you today. And it's all been made possible by our sponsors. And now, without further ado, let the program begin. Thank you, President Kimberly, and thank you to all our sponsors that make the foundation programs possible. If you are ready to join them and donate, scan this QR code with your phone, or we've dropped a link in the chat. Both the code and the link will take you directly to our donation page. We have more great programming lined up for you, starting with a special dialogue between Bridget Graham our interim executive director, and Duff McKagan. Duff McKagan is the local, multi-talented, award-winning bass guitarist of Guns N' Roses and a friend of the foundation. He's an advocate for public schools and mental health. Please help me welcome to Spring for Schools, Duff McKagan. Good afternoon, I'm Bridget Graham. I work with the Bellevue Schools Foundation. I'm here with Duff McKagan. Duff and his wife Susan and I have met about five years ago and we're friends. And I'm very happy that Duff is going to be talking to us today. Hi, yeah, Duff. it's good to be here. It's good to be part of this thing and I'm excited what you guys are doing at Bellevue Schools. But mental health is, is a thing that you guys have really, uh, you guys have already, the safety net has already caught more than a few mm -hmm. students in a, in, a, in a positive way. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, catch them in a, in a positive and healthy and, and loving way. Um, mental health for me, you know, is is been kind of part of my journey, uh, the struggle with mental health. And uh, uh, it started with panic attacks with me, you know, at 16. And um, really, you know, self-medicated that stuff through my 20s which is not the way to do it. Uh, well, when you had a panic attack at 16, you didn't have anything. Your mom helped you. What did you do? How yeah. did you get through that? Right. So, uh, you know, at my high school, there was nothing. There was no counselor you no. could go to. There was, it was talked about in hushed tones. You know, there was people that 
students, and, and it just started in, in elementary school and middle school, the hushed tones like, you know, that, that guy went crazy. Huh. He was gone, right. you know, he was mysterious and you didn't talk about it. You know, you try to figure it out and, and then it happened to me, you know, and I thought, literally, I'd just gone crazy. Oh, this is what it's like to go crazy, you know. Um, and there wasn't, a, it wasn't until I was about 18 that I was talking to a, a girl in the punk rock scene and we were watching TV and I was, I had a panic attack and she told me she had read a book that, that you know, millions of people could see. It was the first time I heard that. I thought I was alone, you know. Yeah. And that feeling, that was such a big feeling for me that to, uh, I got some power back. It wasn't just me. You know, and I said, please tell me more. And I read the book that she told me the book. She, I think she gave me the book that she read. And But I had to find out for myself. And um, after I got sober at 30 and uh, had to deal with my panic attacks and was turned into, you know, depression. I'm not I'm not afraid to say it, but it did. You know, by when I was it's about nine years ago, I had my first depression and it was like me, I'm such a, it doesn't happen to me, you know, I get have panic attacks, but depression's not part of the thing. But I, there was a therapist at one point or somebody that I'd seen that said, yeah, uh, you know, panic, panic is a symptom of depression. And I'm like, well, not with me until it happened. And that is a clinical depression is not anything to mess around with. And, uh, it's really terrifying. And, uh, I've sought and, and received help, and it's, it's something I, I deal with daily, these things. I, I recognize it just my, like my alcoholism, mm -hmm. you know, and I smile at it and go, okay, I got you today. Uh, we're okay, but I've been able to go out and do, do uh, PSAs, public service announcement, mm -hmm. announcements for uh, the five signs, things that you guys are doing at Bellevue Public Schools, and I was so, so happy to, to hear about this. It's a very positive thing, and I think this should be in all public schools okay. in America. You kind of, you know, you can head it off at the pass, as it were, you know, mm -hmm. and... Um, well, you know, also, uh, it's, it's not just the student, it's the parent or the teacher, it's recognizing with each other what some of these signs are. What you're talking about, learning about it at school is great, and then you grow up, and you can recognize it in other people. Yeah. Why we can help each other a little bit more. Yes. Um, I think, you know, guys, if we can get through this pandemic together, um, we can do anything. We're kind of bulletproof. Sure. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we can get back to uh, just being, you know, playing music at schools and talking to each other about mental health and robotics is super killer. Yes. And, and, yes. and if you're here to give money, give your your money. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, True. Let's go. <laughs> so the this Bellevue Schools Foundation does support so many programs. The foundation is wonderful and what you're saying is incredible. Duff, thank you so much for your time and your story today. Uh, I know this discussion will have a huge impact on the community. I want to end with a quote from your book. It's so easy in other lives. That's the one. That's the one. And here's the quote. Everybody gets knocked down. After you take those shots, it's time to stand up and walk on to continue to live. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You guys? Wow, Duff. Thank you for opening your life and your heart to make a difference for others and for our kids. How powerful to share the reality of how mental health really touches every corner of our lives and our community. As Duff shared, your donations make a difference. In the chat, you'll find a link to our donation page, or you can use your phone camera to scan the QR code. Either will take you directly to our donations page. Now I know it's early, but let's take a quick peek at how we're doing. Drum roll please, Sam. Wow, we've already brought in 158, 600, and $88. <laughs> That's amazing. Let's keep up the generous giving. Just click on the link in the chat box or hold up your phone camera and scan the QR code and make your donation to continue the good work 
of the foundation. In the pre-show, you saw a montage of many programs sponsored by the foundation. You saw highlights of the arts program, robotics and music, computer sciences, and all with an emphasis on the inclusion of at-risk or underrepresented groups. Each program is focused on enhancing their education in and out of the classroom. In 2019, the foundation funded a five-year, $450,000 initiative to train 40 staff to assess and support students' mental health. In 2020, we saw youth mental health worsening, with a 9.7% of youth in the U.S. experiencing severe depression. That increased to 12.4% with youth who identified as more than one race. Increasing mental health, awareness, education, and support is a core commitment of the foundation. In our school district, we've created a revolutionary in-house counseling program, the Mental Health Assistance Team, MHAT. It is the first of its kind in the U.S. Our five specialized counselors shared that one in five kids they screen report thinking about harming themselves. Today, we have two students that are going to share their mental wellness journey. Up first, we have an extraordinary young woman, Grace. Grace is currently a junior. Grace found the support services through the Wellbeing Screener that's offered to all 10th graders in health class. When she was ready, she knew where to go. Please help me give a warm welcome to Grace and her MHAT counselor, Piper. I am Piper Sangston, and I am the Mental Health Assistance Team Counselor at Sammamish High School. And this is... Hi, I'm Grace, a student at Sammamish High School. Having someone that can counsel you is so much more than just like a serious type one-on-one -on -one thing. It's like interacting with you. Like me and Piper got to like just chat about life. We got to do like playful things, activities, and just that is what really made me feel like you know this is not something just so serious school based this is like really someone who is trying to connect with me and give me what i'm looking for so that i can feel at my best you know and just talking a little bit about like family you know and how counseling has helped me connect with my family you know before I, like I said, I wasn't doing my everyday routine, you know, because I always used to be that happy person that would always get ready and like be cheering everybody up in my house. But after I had like all these depression symptoms, I was just laying in bed, you know, and I just felt kind of sad, you know, and down. And my family did kind of get upset, you know, and probably thought I just didn't want to get up or I was just being lazy. But after I was able to give them the knowledge of what I was experiencing, you know, they were able to connect with me, you know, ask me more questions and really change even their personality so that their personality can fit my needs so they can help me even more through what I was going through. And now it's just like sometimes they'll just sit with me and they're like, I'm so glad you reached out for help, you know. Even though we could give you that help, we're glad you reached out to someone like inside your school community that was able to make you feel better because we really do see the change in you, you know. So I feel like never be afraid to be yourself, never be afraid to say what you want to say. For me, I used to be like that, you know, I was so like at the beginning, I was such a closed person, you know, it was kind of hard for me to actually say what I was feeling because I didn't even know what I was going through until I was able to receive this type of help that really gave me the knowledge of what I was really experiencing, that I was able to open up. But I really encourage you to be your true self, say what you wanna say, say what is in your heart or in your mind, like all the struggles you're having, cause the more open you are, I feel like that's the best um, way that you'll be able to get all the help you're seeking for. 
I honestly just wanted to speak out of my heart and, you know, speak to like those parents, but also the, those young people. I really want to encourage like people of my age, maybe even younger or older. You know, I used to be one of those people in high school that used to think like, no, nobody in my school is going to understand me. You know, the teachers are just not going to like connect with me. They're not going to understand what I'm going through. Or they're not going to be like able to give me that connection I'm looking for. But I'm here to tell you like, please really do try it out. I used to be one of those people, but trust me, I gave this a chance and I was really able to find someone like Piper who I can connect with that really made me feel that grace, that trust, you know, that was always, she was always advising me through everything and always letting me know that everything was going to be okay. Even when I thought that things were never going to work out, you know, I really encourage you to give it a try, you know. Well, I just wanted to thank you and tell you that um, I like the way that you were always very present during our sessions. You were always engaged. You are really thoughtful about everything that we discussed. Really, truly honest and open um, and trusting. It was it was a really amazing experience to work with you, and I really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you too. Uh, I will forever be thankful that I found this counseling team, that I found you. Uh, it couldn't be better. It's honestly helped me through the like hardest times in my life, and I don't know where I would be without it. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Your courage and encouragement is so inspiring. Currently, the Wellbeing Screener is available only to 10th graders. With your help, we can reach the goal to provide mental health services for more middle and high school students. In the chat, we've included some resources for you to share with your family and your community. Now let's do a quick check-in on our progress today. Wow, we are at $388,250. That is a great start. Every dollar counts and every dollar makes a difference. Up next, we meet a delightful young third grader, Alex. Alex and his parents, Michelle and Brian, are going to share a little bit about their journey. Thanks. At the beginning of the pandemic, Alex was dealing with a lot of issues that all of us were. Missing friends, dealing with all the changes that were going on in our lives. And Miss Myers, his school counselor, set up lunch bunches with his friends to bring some sort of normalcy to his life. This year, Alex began suffering with some real anxiety. The pandemic created a lot of fears around losing someone he loved. And he did something pretty incredible. One day I was feeling very sad, so I reached out to my counselor, Miss Myers, and she put in a bunch of meetings and we worked on a bunch of things together. Me and Miss Myers practiced this method called turtle breathing. So basically what you do, you put your head inside of your shirt and then you say what you are, like mad, sad, or having anxiety. Then you breathe in and then you breathe out. And that is one of the methods that we learned. Me and Miss Myers practice another method. And you probably don't know this one because it's kind of hard to find. It's basically called the Mind Yeti. And Mind Yeti is where it soothes the brain and it calms every single part of your body down. So basically, you breathe in, you hold it for four or five seconds, and then you breathe it out and you do it again like three more times. And that is basically what Mind Yeti is. Me and Miss Myers built this party box together. And basically what we did is she said to find all the things that you love and calm you down. So like this raccoon right here it is my favorite animal and pizza is one of my favorite things. And what is inside it is my favorite things that help me calm down. Like the kissing hand, for example. The example of the kissing hand, it's a very soothing book. I think you should get it. It's a pretty good book. 
Miss Myers is a very important person. Like all the other people in my school, they need anxiety helpers like Miss Myers. She's a counselor to our school. She is a very important person to the world. We are very grateful for Miss Myers and all that she has done to help Alex and our family. And thank you to all of the counselors out there who've helped all of our children through these challenging times. And we know the challenges aren't ending now. As kids transition back to the classroom for the rest of the school year, and even into the fall, the challenges will continue. So if you've already donated today, thank you. And if you haven't donated, we would ask that you would consider. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. You are an impressive young man. And yes, the whole family is right. We can't do this without you. We need your help to continue providing these programs and services. The programs we're talking about today go above and beyond to support the whole person's development and expand the horizons of what's possible for our youth. If you can join us in making this possible, click on the link in the chat that takes you directly to our donation page or scan the QR code with your phone and both will take you to our page. We want to now give a special thank you to all of our angel donors. In the chat, you'll see all of the wonderful partners that have stepped up to contribute as angels. Every year, we have generous donors who contribute to our angel fund. These donors understand and commit to leveraging the power of the one-to-one -one match. For each of you that donate $1,000 or more, our angel fund will double your impact by matching your gift. Please help me say thank you to our angel donors you see in the chat with a round of applause. Our final speaker today is counselor Stephen Ono. Stephen has been working with the Bellevue Schools District for the last seven years. Please help me welcome Stephen and show our appreciation for all the work he and all the other counselors are doing. Hey, yeah, uh, Stephen Ono, I'm a school counselor at uh, Highland Middle School in the Bellevue School District, so I'm glad to be here. So I've, I have really had a, a really good opportunity to just get to know kids, get to know families and staff. Having this, this legacy of families that are bold enough to move to another country, um, you know, that I see that a lot in, in, in my identity, but I see that in my, in my students as well. Part of it is really like, you know, I, I'm, also, I'm also an immigrant. Um, I was able to be an ELL student, so I had to learn English when I was in sixth grade. Um, being a minority, I also had to struggle with some of the things that, that has to do with um, being Asian in a predominantly white or, or, or black community, diverse community. Um, so there's a lot of identity things that I had to go through as a youth that I apply to how I support students now. So, you know, I've actually had individual conversations with Asian students about, you know, seeing their parents or seeing other Asian, Asian folks in, this, in the store or out in the street being hackled or being called names, being called COVID. Um, like it's it's it wasn't something that just happened the last couple of months. Like, um, sadly, you know, I've had to have conversations with with students, and I work in middle school, so these are 11, 12 year olds that have to kind of understand what's going on, you know, in society with the prejudice and, and racism really that happens, and and how to name it because some of them they don't even know what to call it. Like they they don't have the vocabulary to understand and to verbalize it, and so. Part of my work has been really trying to figure out, okay, what is it that you're feeling and how do we express, you know, those feelings of shame, feelings of like anger, you know, sorrow, sadness. Um, and, you know, like for specifically for Asian Americans, like we want to keep face, like you want to kind of like not shame your family or, or show that you're, you're, you're weak or there's something wrong with you. But I think 
it's really important for, for this community, for our community specifically right now to really be, be vulnerable, to really rely on each other to, to help each other out. I think for me, like working within mental health is, is definitely um, hugely impacted this year um, because of COVID. Um, I think for me personally, you know, like having to hold on to what kids are going through, they share that with me, parents share what they're going through with me. And, you know, there's, there's students that both ways, like kids that have struggled in schools and being, you know, having social anxiety at school and, and not wanting to be in class. So all of a sudden having to do everything virtual and, and be at home, they thrived. Like those students, some of them have thrived because they're at home, they're comfortable. And then there's kids that, you know, the, the opposite has happened. Like being in school is part of their identity. They love it and they have been away from it for all year, the whole year. Um, and that's, that's been, you know, detrimental for them as far as mental health. And so it's, it's kind of like, all kinds of layered um, emotions that kids are going through right now. Um, so yeah, I think I think some of the things that that has really impacted is also um, social anxiety. I think before it was like a lot of students missing school. Obviously, parents wanting their school, kids to be in school. Uh, now that we're kind of looking into this, um, going back to hybrid, going into school uh, through this. I really call it like a third wave of doing school because it's not going to be the same as what we had before COVID, right? It's going to be this mix of like in-person, hybrid, uh, virtual. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of social anxiety that we're, we're going to have to to help students, uh, you know, kind of relearn how to do school, relearn how to do it, uh, social distancing, using masks and things like things like that. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a huge task, but I think part of it is is me taking care of myself first, right? Adults, we need to take care of ourselves before we can help our, our students. And so um, I, I hope to do my part and do that and then uh, make sure that I'm there for students as well. That's why I really am thankful for the community health, uh, mental health counselors that, that partner with their school district um, because they, they do a lot of supports for us school counselors. Like I think a lot has been put on school counselors as far as mental health needs. And, and obviously that's, that's what I signed up for. Like I, I enjoy this, this work, um, but you know, it, it never hurts to support from, from, from outside agencies. And so I think with BSF supporting us in this way um, with more resources to, to be able to have these programs and, and opportunities for families, I think that's, that, that'll be, that'll be um, helpful for the future as well. Thank you. Arigato. Thank you, Stephen, Piper, Ms. Myers, and all of the counselors, teachers, and staff. I know that everyone joining us today and on our replay on YouTube is so grateful for the amazing work you do. moment, we'll welcome back board president Kimberly Walker. And afterwards, we'll do a final check-in on our fundraising progress for today. We want to let you know, if you have family, friends, or folks that couldn't join us today, this program replay will be available on YouTube 
and it will be closed captioned in Japanese, Mandarin, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, just to name a few. And folks watching the replay can contribute throughout the school year. If you just joined us, you can donate by clicking on the link in the chat or scanning the QR code to make your donation. Now, let's welcome back Foundation Board President, Kimberly Walker. Wow, that was an amazing program. I wanna say a special thank you to our keynote speaker, Duff McKagan. Thank you to our foundation staff. You're the ones that keep us going. Thank you to my board of trustees for being involved and committed. Thank you to our outstanding students and our admirable educators. And thank you donors. Your contributions make our work possible. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time, sharing your talent and giving your treasure. If you haven't had a chance to donate yet, in the chat, there's a link that you can use to do so now. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, President Kimberly. You are so right. Today's program was made possible by many generous contributions of time, talent, and treasure. And behind the scenes was one person that deserves a special thank you. Our chair of Spring for Schools Susan Ishii Yin. Susan spent countless hours creating the interviews, the inspiration, and the extraordinary experiences we've shared today. Let's show our big love for all her work with massive applause, sparkle fingers, and love, love hearts. Now, it's time for our final total check-in. Can we get a drum roll? 500 as $8,886,000. That's incredible. Congratulations, thank you. That's amazing. Thank you to everyone that joined us today and all of you watching on YouTube. If you would like to get some additional information about the great work that the Bellevue Schools Foundation is doing, Visit us at BellevueSchoolsFoundation.org. Thank you, everyone, and have a fabulous spring.